I know if one thing was reinforced uh, listening to all our speakers uh, today, it's that actionable insights are vital, and that's something we, we really think about at Storyful. Um, if our insights end with a presentation, or they end with a meeting and there are no um, action points after that, we've failed. That's not to say presentations aren't great, but there needs to be a next step. And if you're not providing actionable insights, something's gone wrong. So I'm going to start off just by talking a little bit about um, crisis management. And a, a crisis manager might not be a role you're too familiar with. So I tried to break it down really simply. Um, this is not a crisis. This is the monitoring stage. And crisis managers spend most of their life in this stage where it's almost like institutional paranoia, um, always watching, always wondering if they're missing something. Um, and then, at some point, it becomes a crisis. Uh, <laughs> now, for us at Storyful, our job is to ease that pain. Um, and we do this through a number of ways, and we use a lot of data sources to do it. Um, but I want to talk about a very specific type of crisis because crisis can mean a lot of things um, to a lot of different people. Um, for us, we're specifically talking about reputational crisis here. Um, that is a crisis where your consumer base or even the wider audience um, has lost faith in your brand. Now, with the advent of social media, this has become a massive issue um, for big companies and small companies. Um, and if you think of re reputational crises, it breaks into kind of two stages. Um, and it's almost, it's a little bit like a pathogen. Um, the first kind of, the starting point is often an issue, um, which is a non-acute risk um, to an organization's interests. Um, and these can fly under the radar, or they can be um, very well-known uh, issues that a company is not in the place to resolve, or frankly, they just aren't interested in it. If you think of incidents then, that's almost like the symptoms. This is the outbreak, and this is where a company suddenly realizes, we've messed up here, um, something has happened, uh, it's by nature unplanned. Uh, if it was planned, we would be in serious trouble. Um, and it can either evolve from an issue that's already known, uh, or it can happen uh, completely separately. Um, now, at this incident stage, um, in order to mitigate against it, um, you do require a quick or targeted response, um, or else you may face um, financial or permanent reputational loss. So there's, I won't read out the definition of a crisis management. Basically, that's working quickly um, to mitigate against issues and incidents. So, roughly speaking, um, issues and incidents can be um, divided into internal issues and incidents and external issues and incidents. It's actually uh, inaccurate to put these in a quadrant um, because they shift, they change, they overlap, but it was the easiest way just to present it. So giving you some examples of internal issues, um, these are often the ones that lead to reputational uh, incidents. You've got your poor culture, um, poor security uh, practices, uh, policy flaws, uh, malpractice habits, spotty communications, a big one, um, or insufficient training. External issues then are the bigger um, problems that face co many corporations at once, and that can include infrastructure problems in the country, regulation, environmental problem, politic shifts, economic changes, and cultural shifts as well. So then, as I said, all of these can change and kind of swap, and I wish there was a, a nice way to kind of predict what was going to happen, um, but these are some of the classic in internal incidents. You've got your lawsuits, uh, your accidents, HR issues, uh, product defects, which is, can be also an external issue, uh, incident as well. Same with hacking, and one of our favorite uh, is disgruntled employees. Then if you look at your external incidents, um, these can be stuff like GDPR and non-compliance, um, pollution, exposés, uh, boycotts, or wider perception problems. So this is your classic crisis management model. This is where um, 
we can use a lot of data to, to measure these things. Um, so it starts with prediction. I didn't just write predict, because this is a predict conference, um, but I also don't mean uh, telling the future here. This is just the stage where you assess likelihood of issues and incidents uh, across the company's verticals, and you're never going to get full coverage here. It's just about trying to get as close as you can, identifying the issues that are present. After that, then, you have your planning stage. Um, this is all about building action plans. What we see time and time again in Storyful um, is that the foundations, if, if the foundations are not strong, processes fail, especially at times of crises. So you need to go over these action plans, rehearse again and again and again. So then, ideally, that's the end of the model. We never have to deal with a crisis. Unfortunately, that's not the case in reality. Um, usually, after a crisis starts, um, we enter the control phase, which is the company reactive. So they've changed from passive to reactive. And this is about implement, implementing those action plans and mitigating against long-term damage. Only then, when the crisis begins to, to slow down, can you assess the damage. Um, and what you're trying to do here is working to return to norm. It's not often that you can actually work to return to a better stage than norm, but at least you've learned something along the way. And like many classic models, it finishes with the learning stage, which is the integrations of lessons you've learned into your action plans, further strengthening the processes, and starting again. So how can we use data in this? These are just some ways we can use data. There are many. Um, we can perform an uh, analysis of the landscape. Um, that can be internal or ex external. We can look at consumer behavior, and we can assess the audience. Now, for audience, here I, I pretty much mean the general public. So during, and this is my favorite part, uh, during the actual crisis stage, everything becomes a little more real time, and stress levels start to rise, and people want answers instantly. Um, so really what you want here is a real-time monitoring and threat detection system and solid crisis reporting. What we often see at Storyful is at, the, at this time of crisis, the highest levels, they don't know where to turn. Their classic channels of communication have broken, and they just need to find a signal. Um, then afterwards, um, you can do your brand perception assessments, where you measure and gauge to see, has your reputation changed because of this crisis? And once more, you can look at the landscape, assess, and see if you need to make changes. So, Storyville. Um, have you heard of Storyville? Uh, we're, we're more classically known for the verification of social media, specifically to provide publishers um, with information and content that they can use in broadcasts or online um, publications. So as, as Paul mentioned, we, we kind of started during the Arab Spring, where there was a, a dearth of converse, or content that came through social media, because people there didn't have any other avenues to share this content. And as that happened, publishers quickly found out they didn't know who to trust, they didn't know what content was real, um, and they didn't know whether they were allowed to use it. And honestly, those problems still exist in 2018, um, but we have worked with the biggest publishers in the world to kind of to ensure that they have verified content um, at hand, especially during the bigger breaking news stories. For example, uh, this week, the earthquake in Indonesia. Um, so this is kind of how we work. Um, I had to get a Venn diagram in there as well. Um, we use unique data, and usually when I say that, it is to who I'm talking to, it is unique. For you guys, it's probably not that unique. Um, but we've built proprietary technology on top of that, uh, and we always have a human layer, which means um, our data sets, they come to a human to analyze. Um, now, we obviously use a lot of machine learning to assist us to do that. Um, but we do still trust our team of uh, analysts, strategists, and journalists as well. So how do we do this? You see some data inputs here on the right. For today, I specifically focused on social media. This is not an exclusive list, but it, is, it does take in a large kind of portion of social media space. 
Um, for some of these platforms, we use API access. For some, we are partner. And for some, we have elevated access as well. And I won't talk about this too much, but we suffer the same problems that I've heard in many other conversations this morning, which is we have to normalize this data. As you can imagine, the data from Facebook is very different from the data you get from 4chan. So we have to track the information flow, sequence these events, trace the or origin to ensure that our data, the veracity of our data is in place, unify it, and centralize it. And then, when we have all of that done, um, we work to understand the context of the data, separate fact from fiction, especially in the age of myths and disinformation, and work to verify authenticity and sources. So after that, then, we, this is our battle to create actionable insights. Um, we have our inputs, um, which includes existing research, hypothesis, brand pillars. We look at trends from proprietary social media monitoring tools, as well as our own data sets. And we try to blend in strategic vision and competitive intelligence. At that research phase, then, we try to attune as much as possible our, our insights towards that product or brand. We are usually at working to um, test an assumption that a client has brought to us um, and then provide a layer of analysis on top of that that, um, that includes building customer journeys, brand touch points, understanding consumer motivations, and often very important is purchase considerations as well. So very quickly then, I'll, I'll just run you through a project that we're currently um, working through at Storyful, um, which is to answer that those two phases of crisis management, um, control, um, and we've called it semaphore, um, which is like it's an old kind of old-timey system of flag signaling. Um, and really, what it's trying to do is not only track how a crisis. Um, spreads on social media, but also react to it, and to, to give our clients enough time that they can make rational decisions. So this is kind of how a tri crisis spreads. Usually, and again, this is quite like a pathogen in its, um, in its kind of how it spreads. So it usually starts with a post or a small group of posts. Let's take a product defect, for example. Um, a picture can start on Instagram. From there, then, it contamination um, occurs where these original posts, they gain some traction through engagement on that platform. It spreads then through engagement, shares, retweets, um, and essentially, and a moment of real importance, is it shared cross-platform. So it's no longer contained on a single platform. Um, once more, it starts to bloom, um, where the issue spreads quickly. And usually, this is where mainstream media come in um, and kind of blow it out of out, um, digital media coverage, makes everything about exponentially larger. And then you reach your peak. Um, now, this is the point at which the crisis begins to slow or diminish due to company actions or the moving news cycle. So you can kind of see the exact, this is a real life um, crisis. You can see the exact same thing happening here. What we've done at, uh, with this project is we're trying to alert as close to origin as we can. Um, oh, so if you see the pink dotted line, that is the threshold point. So we, we've built a dynamic threshold for every single platform um, where if it goes above that threshold, um, that's the point it, it sends an alert to us. So to, do, to make this actionable and workable, our analysts are able to use flexible Boolean querying, which allows for you know, a very broad query to be set up um, or a very specific query. Um, we've also used historical back backfill, which allows us um, to set those thresholds right there and then. Um, and my favorite part, what we're working on right now, is that these are smart alerts. So we're trying to separate, using machine learning, we're trying to, to separate out spam, um, non-entities, and make these alerts as smart as possible. And finally, clever integrations. This uh, will only work if we can get the alerts to the person at the right time and actually you know, wake them up, uh, if needs be. So, 
we've actually integrated Semaphore um, with uh, email, Slack integrations, even phone calls if we need to do it. So right now, this is a project that we're still working on. It's not out there in market, um, but it's something hopefully one day we can work with a client on. Um, and hopefully, through doing this, we'll mitigate these reputational crises. I've been Dara Healy. Uh, thanks very much. Enjoy your lunch and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you, Dara.